everyone, it's the Outlaw John Roca here with my spoiler review for Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Yeah, you know, Guy Ritchie's putting his name in front of his films now, kind of like William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. But hey, normally I'd say that's pretentious or maybe a little out of bounds. But when you get a quality film like this as a result, then you know what? You can put his name right in front of the title all day long. I absolutely enjoyed this film. As a former military man, I'm real skeptical of seeing military films. You know, I was in the U.S. Army for eight years because I always worry that they're going to fall into that uh, old plot of like, oh, rah, 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 ignore the other stuff, focus on being America. But actually, this one did a fantastic job of showing you uh, two incredible journeys here between Jake Gyllenhaal's character of Sergeant John Kinley and Dar Salim as Ahmed uh, there in Afghanistan and seeing these two journeys and also showing how obstacles from both governments or parties that are in charge of their respective countries uh, can hinder one from getting to the other or one from saving the other. So I liked that you had a little bit of that subversive thing bubbling underneath the surface here. Where the basic plot of this film is Sergeant John Kinley, who was serving in Afghanistan, he recruits Ahmed, he approves Ahmed rather to be his interpreter there in Afghanistan. We find out that Ahmed lost his son to the Taliban, so he's even more committed to get the Taliban out of his country. Eventually, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is attacked by the Taliban with Ahmed there, and Ahmed saves him and takes him across numerous miles of a Taliban held mountain land to get him to a base and to safety. Uh, and then when Jake gets out or Sergeant John Kinley gets out, when he wakes up, Ahmed has been left there like a lot of the interpreters were left there, which we find out at the end of the movie with a nice graphic there from Guy Ritchie telling us how many interpreters who helped the United States uh, fight the Taliban during all that time that we were there in Afghanistan were left behind, even though they were promised visas to come to America. So John Kinley can't sleep. He can't rest after he gets home because of the incredible sacrifice that Ahmed uh, did for him. So he finds his way back into Afghanistan with the help of Anthony Starr, Homelander himself, what an interesting position for Homelander to be in, uh, gets him in there and he goes and saves Ahmed from the Taliban and gets him and his wife and his young child here to America. That's the basic plot of this thing. So let's get into the things that I liked. And certainly, you know, I love to start up with the acting and Jake Gyllenhaal. This is some of the best work of Jake Gyllenhaal's career. Dare I say some of his career best work, not the career best, but you can put this in the basket with his career best work. Just a really strong portrayal. He is who he is. He's clear about what he wants to do. He's not trying to make you like him. He can be a bit of an asshole. He's stubborn. He's ball busting. He knows how to play the system. But when it comes to going, when it comes to talking with Ahmed and trying to get Ahmed back, you see that there's a genuine care and a genuine affection for this man who sacrificed so much for him. I think Jake does a wonderful job here dealing with the PTSD of that situation, along with commanding his men, because there's a mission that they go on that is just brutal and he loses almost his he loses his entire platoon except for uh, ahmed and this whole uh, attack with the taliban and we see him suffering those losses before he's eventually attacked by the taliban and almost captured by them until Ahmad takes him there. So great performances from Jake. He's tender when he needs to be, strong when he needs to be. You believe him as this uh, guy who's in charge of these people, that they genuinely have affection for him and he knows what he's doing. Him and Ahmad don't get off on the best foot initially because they're both alphas, both rams slamming horns into each other. And I think that works to kind of add some tension and conflict here that you don't know which way uh, these characters are going to go with each other. And Dar Salim matches Jake Gyllenhaal beat for beat in terms of performance, in terms of quality of performance, and in terms of emotion. Just incredible work from Dar Salim. I don't remember seeing him in anything before, but I was just blown away by his performance here. Just initially, right off the bat, he's a guy who you can tell is very self-possessed. He knows what he's talking about. He's aware of the Taliban. He knows how to negotiate in that situation. He's confident of his abilities, and he's not afraid to speak his mind when he needs to speak his mind. Not all the time, but he finds the right moments to speak his mind. And so us as an audience, we immediately gravitate to him and give him our confidence, give him our respect, and especially when he's right, when one of the other interpreters is setting uh, John Kinley and the rest of his crew up to possibly get ambushed there. And then when John Kinley is attacked, after Ahmed, Ahmed and him have worked together to kind of elude the Taliban for that section of the movie, the performance here really goes to another level. Dar Salim really brings the emotion and the rage and the anger and the frustration and the um, exhaustion that would come with having to save this man and the dedication he has because 
He's a person who believes in loyalty, in respect, in brotherhood. And certainly he knows he's got to take care of this man because this man has been put under his charge. And maybe even working out a little bit of the fact that his son was killed by the Taliban. Maybe he feels a guilt here that he wasn't able to protect his son from the Taliban. So he wants to protect this man from the Taliban. So you see that all coursing through him. John Lee Miller, great stuff as well. He's one of these military guys who, you, we, having been in the military, you know the guys that will get the job done and get you those things that you need. And you know the guys that are gonna drag their feet and get caught up in all the red tape. Johnny Lee Miller is not one of those guys, and I really appreciate his Colonel Vokes and what he does. You know there's a friendship there between him and Jake, uh, 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 Sergeant Kentley that works so well. Alexander Ludwig just parachuting in with certain scenes, but certainly bringing the real feeling. This is a guy who's been over there, who's been in some theaters of war, who's experienced the things. He's, so there's a kind of a, um, relaxed approach to these kinds of things that happen. Like, this is just what happens. This is my job. And he brings that kind of approach to his character. Having known guys like that, he very much captures guys like that and the authenticity of it within his performance. Anthony Starr, great stuff. I mean, Anthony Starr coming in as Eddie Parker, the civilian guy who's helping John Kinley get back into Afghanistan, but he's kind of holding it off because he's got a bigger deal uh, going on. And he is there initially is just kind of be uh, a friendly face, but also a little bit of a barrier. But then eventually when uh, Eddie Parker realizes who Sergeant Kinley is, he sends the whole force after him. Anthony's not in that much, but he's in enough to have you feel like, give me more, give me more Anthony Starr down the road. So Emily Beecham does a nice job with this role. She is his wife, Caroline Kinley, but there's not a lot for her to do other than to be there handling business, showing a strength here, but also a belief, you know, when her husband is struggling with this, when her husband can't let it go, she knows the man she married. And so you see this really supportive scene between them. And that's why you cast someone like Emily Beecham in a film like this. You know that she's an actress that can deliver much more. Unfortunately, there's not much more in the script. So you need someone who's going to deliver great stuff with the limited amount of screen time that she has. And I think Emily Beecham does a nice job, especially that scene when she finally acquiesces to letting Sergeant Kinley go to Afghanistan to get Ahmed. The speech she has there, I think is really cool as well. Let's move on to the direction here. Guy Ritchie does a wonderful job. I really am enjoying this kind of second phase of Guy Ritchie's career. Wrath of Man, I think is a fantastic film. I really enjoyed that as well. I haven't seen Operation Fortune, but I am really enjoyed The Covenant that I'm reviewing right now with you all. So to me, I'm liking this new phase of Guy Ritchie, this harder edge, this more serious approach, dealing with more serious subjects, and still holding on to the action thriller vibe of it. There is a lot of harrowing action sequences in this film uh, without losing this uh, feeling of what this is all about. You know, you don't get caught up in just watching an action film. There's some real emotion that is, that is anchoring this film and centering the film. And I appreciated that when I was watching this movie. I think it does a fantastic job with the montages when he needs to. When they're in the desert, that whole journey where Ahmed is taking Kinley to the base is just full of some great direction that puts you into that mood, puts you into that vibe of what's happening. With the Taliban ambush, um, uh, just Sergeant Kinley Ahmed and the rest of their squad there, it is a brutal, unsettling, and heartbreaking sequence when we see his whole squad get wiped out and we see them both running. But all of that uh, action in there, he takes you beat by beat through it and you feel every one of those deaths because Guy Ritchie is smart to give you time with his squad and this rest of the ensemble cast so you can connect to the different characters you connect to the fact that they have a respect for John Kinley so that when they die, we feel every one of their deaths. And a good director knows how to give the right amount of screen time to these actors so that the deaths are powerful and you can feel those deaths resonate with the main character like they do with John Kinley. So I thought he does a fantastic job. The cinematography is great in this one as well. Ed Wilde doing a nice job with the cinematography along with Guy Ritchie's direction throughout. And look, it could have easily fallen into the trap of like, oh my God, there's still... He's still taking him to the base, but it never does. He paces this thing really well. James Herbert editing this film, along with Guy Ritchie as the director, they do a nice job of pacing this thing out, taking its time. Each one of those journeys take their time, and I like that. So when we're following John Kinley back into Afghanistan, I think that is also an incredible job by Guy Ritchie here, making you feel the danger, the tension. The Taliban are very scary in this movie. The way he directs them, they are very scary in this movie. And I think that's uh, another a notch on the belt of quality here from Guy Ritchie in making it clear. There aren't, they aren't a faceless villain. These are scary people. They're smart people. They know exactly what they're doing. So they're a formidable foe for both of these journeys as we watch them go on in the film. And there's no 
rah 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 type of stuff. I enjoyed that in the script. And let's move on to that guy, Richie, co-writing the script here with Ivan Atkinson and Martin Davies. Those guys also having written The Gentleman, Operation Fortune, Wrath of Man, and this one. So along with Guy Ritchie coming into this new phase of his career, these new writers in his career have really been helping him find a little more of the grittier, harder edge to his work here that I really enjoy. The script here is done so well. As I said, you're feeling the emotions in these exchanges. We get enough time with everybody that we understand their roles in this film and their connections to each other and the relationships. We see these moments of ball busting. We see these moments of intimacy. We see these moments of connection between people who know each other, especially, as I said, on John Kinley's squad. These guys know each other and those back and forths as a military man, the ball busting stuff, the nicknaming stuff, all that stuff, yes, has it been stereotypical in other films? Sure, but in here, it feels natural. It feels organic. It feels real, and you're connected to it. You know, that's what we do in the, in the military, give each other a bunch of shit all the time. I think the script does an excellent job of showing you how the red tape of the government and the military can really mess up a good humanitarian mission here from John Kinley to go and get Ahmed, someone who sacrificed and put his family in, in danger in order to help the U.S. soldiers and the United States weed out the Taliban from Afghanistan. It isn't highlighted. It isn't like, look how terrible it is, but it's there enough that you understand these are things that people have to overcome. And on the other side, you know, the writers balances out with the Taliban and we see how brutal and vicious they can be. We see that there's an embarrassment here that, Con that Kinley was able to get away with, uh, that Ahmed was able to get Kinley away from them and onto the base. So there's an anger here, frustration here. We see their leaders and what they have to do to take care of business here. And I like in the script that we find out that Ahmed's brother is a, a person who can help uh, John Kinley get to Ahmed. And that scene in the cafe is fraught with tension. Great dialogue there is where they're back and forth. And another thing I want to highlight about the script and Guy Ritchie's direction overall is that I thought the way they established the themes and the symbolism of brotherhood here, I thought was fantastic. Yeah, Ahmed and Sergeant John Kinley are not brothers by blood, but they're brothers by experience. They're brothers through war. An interpreter and a gentleman who is running the military side of things, they come together begrudgingly, but you feel what they're doing for each other is born out of respect and loyalty and understanding and a love for each other. Human spirit there that is overcoming all these odds in order to do the right thing. They're coming together from two different sides of the track, but understanding each other and the way they sacrifice for each other, uh, I think it's just a beautiful message to send out into the world, especially now when we're so fractured and everyone's jumping at each other. And certainly I've been guilty of it at times. Uh, it's nice to see a film that kind of shows you that people who come from two different experiences uh, can find a common ground and can find a strong connection with each other and a true affection for each other. Because at the end of the day, strip away countries, strip away races, strip away all of that stuff, gender, we're all human beings. And the desire to connect, the desire to believe in other people who are believing in you is really powerful. And that comes through in this film as well. Now, if there's some things I could nitpick, as I just said earlier, I would have liked some more of fleshing out of the relationship with him and his wife. Maybe, you know, 10 more minutes of a little more scenes with them. I'm no, not always a fan of giving limited screen time to significant others because when you're in a good relationship, you spend a lot of time telling your significant other about your stuff, about your struggles. Maybe, you know, 10 more minutes of a little more scenes with them, some more time with his children. He has two kids. We don't, we know them and we get to hear little things about them and we see them, but we don't really feel as strong of a connection as we'd like to feel. And also Alexander Ludwig's character here, Declan O'Brady, he just kind of swoops in and swoops whoops out and you don't really know too much about him except he's got all this information and he can help uh, uh john out but i would have liked to have had a little more knowledge what are his intentions what are his drive what is his impetus for doing the things that he's doing so those are things that i could probably maybe nitpick about the movie itself but those are pretty much the only things that kind of held this film back from me uh, giving it five stars out of five stars so overall i give the film 4.25 cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats guy ritchie's the covenant is a well-crafted action-packed and intense drama expertly directed by guy ritchie featuring fantastic and moving performances from jake gyllenhaal and dar salim and especially dar salim a film about the bonds of brotherhood and war that'll move you enlighten you and uplift you as it takes you on these dual journeys as a former army man, I can be skeptical of films like this, but I'm happy to report that this is a film that shows the extraordinary nature of this situation in full. It highlights the good and bad sides of the military and the government when confronted with situations like this and the strength of the human spirit to overcome all the odds when we fight for each other. 
Really fantastic work from Guy Ritchie with a damn good supporting cast of Johnny Lee Miller, Anthony Starr, Alexander Ludwig, and Emily Beecham. Go see The Covenant, my friends. Go see it. And let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. Hit a like on this video. Share it on your social media as well. And please remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. I'm on my own covenant, and that is to uh, get to 50,000 subscribers. That's my covenant with you all. I am driven to get there by the end of the year. So help me do that by subscribing down below and hitting that bell button. All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching the spoiler review of Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. I'll talk to you next time with another brand new review here on the Outlaw Nation. Mm -hmm.